welcome back. One of the things that we enjoy doing at the Outdoor Education Centres in the spring and summer is exploring our wetlands. If you live in the Ottawa area, you might have had a chance to explore the Ottawa River, maybe the Rideau Canal, Mud Lake, Dow's Lake, Maribla Bog, or maybe you even live close to a small pond or wetland. Today we're going to explore the ponds that we have at the Outdoor Education Centre. We're going to get the chance to visit an ephemeral or vanishing pond that's going to dry up in the summer months. And we'll also have a chance to visit a pond that stays wet all year long. So let's join the instructors as we see what they've found in our spring ponds. I'm standing on the dock by a wetland known as an ephemeral pond. Ephemeral is a term to describe something that just lasts a short amount of time. So when we talk about an ephemeral pond, it means that it's going to disappear by the summertime. So this pond here is a collection of snow melt and rainwater. And when those warm days come back in May and June, they evaporate all of the water and eventually it will be completely dry here. It makes it a very special home for some creatures. So let's take a look and see what lives here. Did you spot something moving in the water that looked like a rowboat? It might have been a water boatman. So water boatmen have boat-shaped bodies with long oar-like or paddle-like legs. They only measure about one centimeter in length and they mostly feed on plants and algae. They must breathe air, so if they're going to be underwater for a long period of time, they will take their long hairs on the underside of their body and trap an air bubble that they'll hold onto as they swim deeper into the water. I bet you recognize a round creature with a long tail that's swimming in this bin. That's right, tadpoles. They're one of my favorites too. There are a few species of frogs that make their home in our ephemeral pond, living in the forest and returning to the pond to lay their eggs each year. The wood frog, spring peeper, and green frog are common frogs in our ephemeral pond. These tadpoles have already started to grow into adults. Let's take a look at the frog's life cycle. They begin as eggs that are surrounded by a jelly casing. Each female frog can lay up to 2,000 eggs and they're often submerged in the water or attached to vegetation. The eggs will take 9 to 30 days to hatch. And they may take about 8 weeks or more to grow into an adult, depending on the availability of food or water temperature. When the tadpole first emerges, it has external gills to absorb oxygen from the water. And they're about five millimeters long. These gills will grow skin over top of them as they develop. And the tadpoles in our bucket are at this stage. Their external gills have grown over and their bodies have started to get round and their tails have started to get longer. In order to grow, tadpoles must eat a lot of vegetation and small creatures in the water. The next stage that these tadpoles will move into is that they will begin to grow their back legs, then their front legs, then their tail will begin to shrink, and then in the next stage, it turns into an adult frog that will be able to hop up onto land and make the forest its home. You might wonder why frogs choose to lay their eggs in vernal or vanishing ponds. Frogs prefer these small shallow ponds to lay their eggs because they want to avoid large predators like fish. Now, the tadpole does have one predator in this small pond. So let's join David to find out what preys on these tadpoles. Hi, it's David here. Have you noticed that long, slender creature doing laps around the bin? 
Yeah, that one right there. Well, let's take a closer look. It's what's called the predaceous diving beetle larva. And when I say larva, I'm referring to the young stage of a beetle. There are even some younger ones in here with it, like here, 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 and even here. Throughout their life, they'll continue to grow. And it looks like this beetle right now is trying to do just that by eating anything it can find. In fact, it's often referred to as a water tiger. And it's a pretty voracious predator here in ponds like this. Look at it grabbing this tadpole. And that tadpole will make a nice meal for this predaceous diving beetle larva, and it will just get bigger and bigger. Eventually, they'll all get large enough that they'll crawl out of the pond and go through a metamorphosis, or a pupa stage, in the soil nearby, and then they'll emerge as an adult beetle, the predaceous diving beetle. We can see the adult beetle here returning to the pond, and unlike the larva, it doesn't have gills. It can't actually breathe underwater unless it takes that bubble of air and carries it along with it. Then it goes to the surface when it needs to refill. We're here at the waterfront at McSkimming. I'm standing on the dock in a man-made pond. This was a low-lying area that we dug out and in partnership with Ducks Unlimited created into a wetland. Unlike the pond that we looked at before, this pond is not ephemeral. It will stay wet all year long. So we're going to do some exploring and see what are the differences between the creatures that are living here and the creatures that we see in the ephemeral pond. Let's take a look. You can see how much larger this pond is than the temporary pond that we found in the forest. And as we're walking around the shoreline here, I noticed some movement, it looked like a, a ribbon kind of waving in the water, maybe the size of my pinky finger. Why don't we head over to the dock where Juwayne and Kathleen are starting to collect creatures and take a look at what they found. Maybe there's a chance that they've caught one of these in the bucket. There it is. Uh, did I just hear someone say, oh, is that a leech? It is indeed a leech. And they have a bad reputation, I know, but there are 70 different species of leech found here in Canada. Most of them feed on soft tissue of, of their prey, and some are adapted for feeding on specific animals like fish, turtles, or ducks here in these wetlands. We saw how they moved by undulating their body. You should try that next time you go swimming. If you're caught up on the idea that leeches feed on blood, well, then consider this. For us as humans, leech bites are fairly painless. They only take tiny amounts of blood, and there's very little chance of disease transmission. So when you find a leech on, you can simply pick it off. Um, but it doesn't go only one way, because leeches are an important food source for many of the same animals that they feed on. They'll be eaten by frogs, turtles, fish, and birds throughout this wetland. So they're an essential part of the food web here. If you look really closely, you might see a transparent or see-through worm-like creature moving in the water. This is a glass worm, or also known as a phantom midge larva. It measures only a centimeter long, but these creatures are ferocious predators. They feed on mosquito larvae and water fleas. So the antennae will reach out and grab its prey as it passes by and it will crush it and bring it towards its mouth to eat. It spends most of its life in this larval stage and later will emerge as an adult. Hey everyone, it's Lindsay here at the Bill Mason Center's Vanishing Pond. Who wants to come take a look at what kinds of creatures we have here? You may not recognize this aquatic predatory insect um, in its nymph stage in water, but many of us are familiar with the adult aerial and terrestrial version of this insect known as the damselfly. If you take a close look at the nymph, it's got a long body with a head that almost reminds me of a hammerhead shark and six legs that come off the skinny body. At the end of this skinny body you'll notice three sort of tails um, and those are actually external gills or lungs um, that are on the outside of its body. 
These nymphs aren't great swimmers, so you often wouldn't find them in fast moving water. They're typically found in shallow, slow moving pools of water. Once they are ready to shed their exoskeleton for the last time and become a terrestrial flying insect, they will move to the edge of the water, possibly climb out of the water onto a rock or a nearby plant where they will shed that skeleton or um, external spine. They don't have a regular spine like humans. They have a spine on the outside of their body called an exoskeleton. They will shed that, leave that behind, and they become their flying adult form. Hey there everyone, Christine here to introduce you to one of my favorite pond creatures, the caddisfly larva. These little guys start off as little flat worms that encase themselves in a bit of a silk lining so that they can use materials from their habitat to protect themselves. This pond has four of them as shown in these circles. Pretty cool. They've used leaves and little sticks from the pond to create a case for you that you can see a little bit more up close here. You can see it moving around using its six legs to try to reach out and grab some vegetation for it to eat or add to its house. I love how they use their full body to move themselves around. At Max Skimming, we have a different species that wraps itself up in a leaf. Look at them all moving around the bucket. As an adult, the caddisfly doesn't live very long, just a few weeks, long enough for it to mate and lay eggs for its next generation. Another one of my favorite pond creatures are the fairy shrimp. It's this orange little creature here, swimming about wildly beating its 11 pairs of legs. Yeah, you heard me, 22 legs is what it's using to propel itself through the water. And if you ask me, when you're looking up close at them, they almost look like feathers. So cool. They also have two little antennae that you can see at the top of its head and those beady little eyes. Would you believe me if I told you there were 300 species of fairy shrimp worldwide? What's really cool is they actually have two different types of eggs in the egg sac that they're carrying. One set might hatch right away. Another set will sit at the bottom of the pond and won't hatch until next spring. I'm so excited we could share this with you because I love the pond creatures. I realize that some of them look kind of scary and it's a little freaky thinking about them all living in the waters around us. But remember, most of these creatures live in ponds that we often wouldn't go swimming in or exploring in. But I do wanna challenge you to keep your eyes open for creatures that live in ponds and other waterways. When you have a parent with you, be sure to very safely maybe lay on your stomach or sit down on your bum and watch the water for movement because you might be surprised at the things you'll see there. Also remember that most of those creatures are going to be flying in the air soon. I don't know if you can see, but there are dragonflies flying all around me and they too start their lives in the waters. If you have any questions about this video this week, please have your teacher or parent help you fill out the form below in the comment section. We would love to hear them and we'll hopefully have a chance to answer them for you soon. Remember, stay safe and get outside friends.